Uh, so in this presentation, we're going to have a look at uh, password authenticated key exchange and look at some of the principles behind uh, PIC and see if we can find a better way to be able to authenticate users using passwords. So the problem that we have is this. We might have a user, Alice, who has a password QWERTY. Our current method of storing her password is to be able to define a, a hashing method and then to be able to uh, avoid uh, rainbow table attacks we add some salt onto uh, Alice's password and then we derive a hash from there. Unfortunately we must store the hash beside, we must store the salt beside the hash which means an intruder, Eve, basically just has to look up a dictionary and then take lots of different uh, passwords from the dictionary and try different permutations because she will now have the salt. If she searches through, then she'll find the one that matches uh, Alice's password and the salt because she'll be able to find the same hash value. So in this case, most user passwords can actually be cracked in some way. So what we need is a method that allows uh, Bob, the server, to be able to store a share, some sort of secret and then for Alice not to give away her password but to prove that she still knows the password. So SRP is one method which is used and it's integrated in TLS uh, and also into uh, many Apple products. And what happens is that Alice and Bob will exchange some details and at the end of it they'll derive the same encryption key and they can uh, validate, the server can validate that Alice knows her secret and we do not release any details of her uh, password from what's stored on the, on the server. So SRP is a fairly complex protocol And here it is here. So we have an identity and then we also have a password and then we go through uh, various stages of actually proving that uh, Alice knows her password without actually storing it on the system. Another method that we can use is what's called the speak. And with this, we uh, use a password key exchange. So let's look at this scenario here where uh, Alice, the, the client, wants to show Bob that she still knows her password. So we don't want to be communicating the password over the wires, but both Bob and Alice will know what the password actually is. So here's the, the, the basic method. Alice generates a random value x and takes g, a point on the elliptic curve, to calculate x, which is another point on the curve. She then computes w times m plus x. x is this value here. m is a well-defined point. And w is her password converted into an integer. This value of t is then passed to Bob. Bob then generates his random number and we have a point on the elliptic curve to produce another point here. He then calculates s is equal to w times n plus y. n again is another point which is fixed and w is the password converted into an integer value. It is not possible, even though Eve is listening, to be able to determine what the value of the password actually is. So Bob sends that to Alice. Alice then calculates the key as the x value times s, the value she's received, minus wn, she knows n, and uh, 
W is the password converted integer value. Bob calculates this value. They should end up with the same key, which is x times y, the two random values, times g. Every single time, we will get a new key. And only by knowing the value of w will we be able to derive the same key. So it's done by this. If we take s, we get this here, wn plus y. And then we subtract wn to that, and that cancel. So we just get y, and y is equal to yg. So it's x times y times g. So we'll have a look at how that really works by looking at speak 2. Okay, so we have uh, the password here and then the ID for Bob and Alice and we'll use elliptic curve in here. So every time that we run this with the same password we should get a different key generated. So here's the shared key at the end of it. This is the value that Alice passes and this is the value that Bob passes. We can use other uh, security levels if, if we require. And this is the Python code here that we're actually using uh, for it. Obviously Bob and Alice would be communicating over a network but this shows a simple demonstration of it. Okay, so every single time we should end up with a different uh, key at the end of it. And then if we don't want Bob to actually store the password, then what he will do is to be able to hash the, the password in the salt uh, and delete the original password and then that's then used to provide the validation. An improved method is opaque. An opaque is a fairly new method of opaque and with this there is an original there is a, a registration of the password which generates a key pair. So there's a client secret and then there's a server public key. Bob will only hold the salt value and Alice will only hold the password value. Alice will never determine the salt value and Bob will never determine the password. So what we have is what's called an oblivious uh, pseudo-random function. And it's also integrated into the Diffie-Hellman method. With this, Bob can actually pass the value of the salt value to Alice without actually Alice ever finding out what the salt value is. But she can then use it to be able to derive a key. So if we say that the value that we get here is salt2, then it's possible to calculate a key based on this new salt value and the password that Alice knows. She then knows that this is the right key because Bob, with her secret key and his public key, passes a ciphered value of the key of which she can decrypt and then determine if she has the right key or not. So in this way, we divorce both the password and the salt and only by bringing the two of them together can we actually create the right key and validate the user. If Alice wants to re-register her key, her password, again she would go through this registration process and then uh, generate new sets of keys so that she owns her own password and owns the ability to re-create uh, her password. Okay, so that's been an introduction to PAKE or Password Authentication Key Exchange.